Hey, you all, welcome to today's video. We're gonna focus on the house of kerosene today. Before I get started, I need your advice. I'm testing out a new mode here, video mode. It's called portrait video mode on my camera. And I think it's supposed to make the background look soft. I don't know how I feel about it. Let me know your thoughts. And I think it also highlights all the texture on my face. So, hey, y'all, hey, we're gonna be close up and intimate today. <laughs> A few videos ago, I talked about a kerosene fragrance or two, I think, and asked, do you want to see a kerosene video? And enough of you said yes, that here we are today talking about kerosene, which is a weird time of year to talk about kerosene, and I will share why. I wanted to share with you a few notes about the house before we get started, because that is what's interesting to me about kerosene and the reason that I started to look into them. This is a gentleman out in Michigan who was part of the automotive industry, if you're familiar with Detroit and all of the surrounding area. Uh, for a long period of time there, it was sort of ruled by the automotive industry. And if you weren't connected to the automotive industry, you knew someone who was. So he says, the owner, that he felt like it was just about the factory production and numbers, and he wanted to do something a little bit more creative. And he knew that he loved the scent of, check this out, dirt, grease, oil and sometimes blood <laughs> from a busted knuckle. He's always been captivated by scents like gasoline, stamped steel, plastic, trees, earth. And so he wanted to make sure that all of his fragrances had three core things, that they were raw, unique, and approachable. He also talks about the fact, and this is why filming this close to summertime is probably a crazy thing to do, but he talks about, uh, because he's in Michigan, the month he talks about because he's in Michigan, the state is cold most of the year. It's colder most of the year than it is warmer in the, in the warmer months. And so he said he's attracted to warm notes like amber, woods, and spices, and wanted to make sure that those had a prominent place in the fragrances that he created. So the other thing I wanted to mention is that my sweet friend here, Marcy at Marcelina Teresa, her channel, Teresa, I always want to call her some exotic Marcelina Teresa. Marcy, my girl Marcy, y'all know Marcy, go check out her channel. She is the one that put me on to kerosene fragrances, uh, starting with Unknown Pleasures. Recently, though, I went down the kerosene rabbit hole. So we're going to talk about 12 fragrances today from kerosene, three of which I own currently, and the other nine of which I have sampled and want to give you my impressions on. One thing about kerosene fragrances is that they all look the same. They're all in square bottles like this with a metal plate, an actual metal plate, if I'm not mistaken, on the front. You know, sometimes you see these metallic looking plates on fragrances and they're actually just plastic, which kind of bothers me. Does that bother you? I know that's silly, but anyway. <laughs> and then you see that the lettering looks like it is literally stamped into the metal plate here. So they're all the same. And these 100 mil bottles all go for 140 US dollars, which I'm, for me, considering that this is a niche indie house, I find that incredibly affordable. Some people may disagree, but considering what some of the astronomical prices are that independent perfumers and niche houses will charge, and even designer now, 140 for an enormous bottle like this, I find to be on the reasonable or more reasonable end. Certainly not a cheapy or affordable fragrance by any means. But let me stop yapping and let's dive in. Start off with Unknown Pleasures, since I brought this one up first. And I will just say straight out, this is my favorite from the house. The one that Marcy sent me, the one that got me interested in this house. This is such a beautiful, really delectable gourmand fragrance. You can almost eat this. It is mainly a, for me, a lemon and caramel fragrance. There's a beautiful Earl Grey tea note in here, as well as tonka bean and waffle cone, which I love. If you've been watching me, you know that I tried whiff of a waffle cone from Imaginary Authors and had a really hard time with that one. It didn't, it didn't do what I thought a waffle cone type of fragrance should do, but this does. This is a very sweet, thick fragrance, really fantastic for the dead of winter, for early spring even, or for late fall. I think this is a little bit heavy for summertime, but as always, wear whatever you feel comfortable wearing. But I think that this is maybe one of the more feminine leaning scents that I have smelled out of the kerosene lineup. And the one that I would advise people to try first, by the way, you can get samples on the kerosene site. Oh, really, really good. Really, really good. Really bright, happy, lemony, caramelly gourmand. So unknown pleasures, huge thumbs up for me. My second favorite from kerosene is sweetly known. I got a sample of this from Jesse here on YouTube. Also, I'll link both of these ladies down below. Jessica Trimmon is the name of her channel. 
This is an interesting fragrance, one that when I first spritzed on, I was like, okay, I'm not sure how I feel. And then as it settled down, I realized that I really do enjoy this fragrance. Do I love, love it? I wouldn't say that. I would say I really enjoy it. And I think it's a really nice gourmand. So here we have a spicy gourmand. There's a lot of cardamom, cocoa, there's a sugar note and a caramel note as well as vanilla and musk. Those are the notes that are listed on the website. And the way that I would describe this have you ever walked into a breakfast place, a diner? Now you have to like imagine, like separate out the meat that you smell in a diner, like the bacon and sausage and all of that. And just think about all of the sweet gourmand notes that are in the air. So think about pancakes and maple syrup and French toast and all of those really delectable notes. Imagine all of those sprinkled with a spicy cardamom on top. That's sort of what this fragrance gives me. It's another thick, heavy fragrance that I think is great for fall into winter and again early spring not something i think i would feel super comfortable wearing in the summertime but uh, check this out if you are gearing up for your fall fragrances yes we're in the spring here when i'm filming this video but y'all this video will be up forever for you to enjoy i hope so think about what you're going to be putting into your fragrance wardrobe over the summer so that come fall you're ready for all of those fantastic fragrances and then if you're in the southern hemisphere and you're in the middle of your winter check out this house so yeah this is a spicy gourmand fragrance a bit daring and the other thing that I should probably say about the kerosene fragrances is that they're pretty projecting and long lasting. None of the fragrances that I tried were shy. Maybe there were a couple that were a little bit on the softer side. So I'll talk about which ones those are. Those are. But for the most part, these, these fragrances, they come to play. <laughs> they come to sit on your skin and project out and let people know what you're planning on smelling like that day. So again, a hundred mils for $140. And to get good performance and longevity, sillage, all of those things, not bad, you all, not bad. Definitely a house worth checking out. The third kerosene fragrance that I purchased, and the one that I'm still getting to know, is the Winter of 99. By the way, if you go to the website, which is houseofkerosene.com, this is listed under the website exclusives tab. So it's not in the lineup of the regular classic fragrances. So just know that. And of course, you can type into the search did I forget to say this is not sponsored at all? <laughs> I'm just really interested in this house because it is so different and I appreciate the story behind the house. Anyway, winter of 99. Where was I in 1999? I had graduated from college and I was teaching. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. I love that it has a specific year though. For me, this reminds me a lot of sense of the deep holiday season. The notes listed for this are smoldering vanilla, woods, nutmeg, and molasses. But to me, it smells like the scent that you would have in the air at Christmas time near your tree. If you have the cinnamon sort of, uh, what do you call those pine cones or the cinnamon brooms or whatever around your house, that is what I get from here. And maybe there's something a little bit aromatic baking in the kitchen as well. Let's say like a bread that's not sweet, it's more savory, something like that. If you have the mix of like the cinnamon in the air with whatever's happening in the kitchen, that's a little bit of what you get here. Another really strong projecting fragrance. I would say this is a fairly unisex fragrance, maybe like a few toes over into the masculine direction. So keep that in mind. And this is one that's definitely a dead cold of winter kind of a smell. I could see this playing nicely under heavy sweaters and coats and those sorts of things because it's a thick, spicy winter fragrance. So, so for winter of 99, I give it mostly a thumbs up. Maybe it's like this because I'm still trying to get to know it. And I would say that I like it, but it's not a strong love like unknown pleasures and a really strong like like sweetly known. Let's get into the samples then and I'll give you my impressions of those real quick. As I mentioned before, all of the bottles look the same. So I will just put one bottle up in the corner and it, it'll have the wrong name as I go through these, but there's no sense in like flipping through them, but I'll have the name up here also. So we're going to go next to follow and followed, which I think are two of the other popular fragrances from the house of kerosene, at least among the ladies on YouTube. And I've tried both of these. These are coffee fragrances, so you have to like coffee to enjoy these, or at least enjoy the smell of it in the air. So follow, follow has notes of coffee beans, 
vanilla, benzoin, tonka, sap, and amber. So both follow and followed, I find to be pretty strong fragrances. Uh, <laughs> I said in a video when I first sampled, I think it was followed. I think I said it was moderate in uh, performance and longevity. And many people jumped into the comments and said, nah, nah, girl, this thing goes on and on forever and ever and ever. So I trust their opinion because I was merely sampling it. I really like follow. I think it's a nice coffee fragrance. Uh, more than anything else. And you do get some vanilla, some sweetness in there and some softness from the tonka and the amber. So this one gets a thumbs up from me as well. And then you have followed, which to me is kind of like an amped up version of follow, except so it's mostly coffee. This one has a little bit more caramel and a little bit more of the cocoa nuance in it than maybe follow does. And to me, followed smelled a lot like coffee on top of coffee with two pumps of syrup and the syrup has a little bit of a cocoa touch in it. So this is a really interesting fragrance. And like I said, according to viewers on my channel, it lasts a super duper long time. So <laughs> take their word for it, not mine, that it was of moderate uh, longevity on me because again, it was a sample. And as I always say, friends, sampling and trying from a full bottle can sometimes be two completely different experiences. I do like followed. I give both follow and followed a thumbs up. I think I would probably purchase followed first if I were going to get one of the two, but you can't go wrong with either one. I'll talk next about another feminine one that I tried out, then a unisex one, and then we'll go to some masculine leaning fragrances from the house. This one is called Dirty Flower Factory, Dirty Flower Factory. And some of the notes listed for this are jasmine, rose, orange blossom, peppercorn, chili pepper, sandalwood, ambergris, musk. I have to say, I did not really care for this fragrance. In fact, I quite disliked it. For me, this felt like hot metal to my nose. Not like it burnt my nose, but it smelled like hot metal. Not surprising considering the background of the house, right? So let's Keep in mind the materials that the perfumer of the house is working with and wanted to represent in his fragrances. So I totally get that, but this does smell to me like hot metal that had burnt flower petals sitting on top of the hot metal. So as though the metal sort of made the, the petals sort of dry up and the scent that came off of those as they dried up is sort of what came to mind for me as I tried this. I found the florals in here to be a little bit indolic, or if you're not familiar with that term, it means a little bit like smelly, like if you've had a a flower that's beginning to decay, what that smell is that it gives off. And then some other florals smell like that right off the bat, like they smell a little bit. Some people say dirty diaper, and I love that because it's a great way <laughs> to describe it. Um, so this was not for me. However, I did find the fragrance because of the floral aspects to be feminine and would love to know if you've tried it. In fact, I think some of you have because you've commented about it in my other videos. So let us know your thoughts on Dirty Flower Factory if you've tried it and do you like it and would you recommend that others try it out? Next, I'll go to Unforsaken, which is one that I found really interesting and probably the most unisex of all of the fragrances that I tried from the House of Kerosene. This has some nice citrus notes in it, tangerine, clementine, yuzu, which is a bright juicy note that has a citrusy sort of twist to it, ginger even, tonka bean, vanilla, there's coconut in the fragrance. So from that aspect, the note structure looks super interesting on uh, Unforsaken. I would describe this as a happy but chill fragrance. Like I, I got good vibes from this, but like really laid back. Like this is the person at the dinner table or at the summer party who's just sort of kicking it. You know what I mean? They came in their chill button down Hawaiian shirt or whatever whatever and they've got their flip-flops on their hair is freshly combed and they're just sort of sitting back in the corner enjoying their life not bothering anybody the way i describe this is the words mimosa fizzy citrusy and vetiver came to mind there's no vetiver listed as a note but vetiver sometimes can smell a little bit like hay a little bit sort of green and dusty like a very pale green dusty sort of thing so i'm not sure what in there gave that maybe the yuzu and the ginger who knows that kind of gives you that sort of vetiver type of feel so i really uh thought this was a nice fragrance i don't think it's for me but if you're interested in that kind of a fragrance check out Unforsaken. Next we're gonna go to Copper Skies. I love the name of this fragrance. I wonder where the term Copper Skies come from, comes from. If you know what that refers to, let me know. I haven't Googled it, I haven't looked it up. But when I think about Copper Skies, I think about sunsets. And then because of the background of the house, it makes me imagine factories where automobiles are being made and the kinds of smoke that's coming up out of the 
exhaust systems there. So I'm looking at in my mind, the billows of exhaust coming from those factories up in the sky, capturing the light of a sunset that has some coppery hues in it. Totally making that up. Anyway, the notes here, amber, cedar, tobacco leaves, honeycomb, basil, and cloves. Ooh, this was for me a seriously masculine fragrance. And <laughs> I wrote about the mood of the fragrance that it's a serious mood like this one. This one's ready to kick your butt if you mess with it. It's that kind of a personality. This was a sticky, gooey, thick, spicy, smoky, resinous, woody fragrance. It was all of that. And it's not a fragrance that I think I would be super comfortable wearing, although I do like masculine fragrances too, but I can absolutely see this being amazing on my husband. So I wrote in my notes, yes, but for hubby, this might be one that I look into grabbing for him for a present. So love the name, love the fragrance, very masculine, very serious, very strong, very in your face and very thick and strong. So I, uh, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Definitely for hubby, maybe not so much for me, but a really, really good one. I'm going to go next to Black Vines. This has an interesting note structure. I'll read just a few. Ivy, fig, star anise, cinnamon, tonka, incense, vanilla. I found this also to be an incredibly masculine fragrance. I'm looking at my notes in case you're wondering <laughs> what I'm looking down at. And for the, the mood, I wrote down that this fragrance is kind of like emo. You know what emo means? Like emotional, that uh, genre of music and unique. This is a very unique fragrance. What I got from this in my mind, without looking at the notes, it reminded me a lot of black licorice. That's what I got. Like if you open a bag of black Twizzlers or something like that, the smell that smacks you out of that bag, black licorice. This felt really camphorous to me as well. Green and very musky in the dry down. I don't think this fragrance is for me, but I got to give it props for being super unique. So from that point of view, it gets a big thumbs up. This is one of those, you know, you're not going to find a lot else that smells like black vines. So it's worth checking out if you want to try a fragrance that's different from everything else. And look, if you like that sort of smell of licorice, even though that's, oh, you know what? It's just the star anise is probably what I'm picking up. Do we say anise? I think it's anise. Like I want to say anise, but I used to look it up and go, well, how do you say that? And I'm remembering it's always the opposite of what I think. So I think it's anise, except so it's the opposite, then it's anise. Anyway, it's that one that thing <laughs> that also smells very much like licorice. So that's, that's what it is. That's what's coming out in this fragrance for me. Really interesting one and worth trying out. Next, we're going to go to fields of rubus. Is that how you say that? Rubus, 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 this one. And the notes, raspberry, plum, apple, tobacco, musk, vanilla, some patchouli. I found this also to be a rather masculine fragrance. The mood that it gave me was contemplative. This is like a brooding contemplative type of fragrance. The description was that it was vibrant, but musky and had some sweetness, which made it more sort of drop back and like provoke thought for me. In terms of what I want this, I, I said maybe I thought this was soft and nicely done. So even though it's leaning a little masculine, I could see myself wearing this fragrance um, and enjoying it. A really interesting one. I found this one to be a little bit softer, as I mentioned, than the other fragrances, which can be really loud and kind of beast mode. This one was a little bit more chill and laid back. The next one is called Blackmail. And look, let me tell you, <laughs> the notes is not what this smelled like to me. Notes, raspberries, plum, and vanilla. So automatically I'm thinking like sweet, girly gourmand, sandalwood, oud, amber, and musk. However, unless this was mislabeled, I guess that can happen. What I got here, I wrote masculine AF, like super duper masculine as a fragrance. I also said the mood for this was Gotham City Batman. Like, have you seen the latest Batman where the entire, it's almost like a four hour movie. The entire movie is dark and brooding and Batman moves around like in silence and he's like a vigilante, like protecting the city from crime and bad guys. That's what this fragrance reminded me of. I wrote in terms of my verdicts for it, ooh, ooh, that this reminded me if I had to say what was in this without knowing the notes. I found this to smell like an oud fragrance, okay? What's in here that, I don't know. Oh, oh, it does have oud. Hello, Veronica. It has sandalwood, oud, amber, and musk. So I was right, oud. 
and vanilla and spicy. I thought it was spicy and it had this darkness to it. Darkness, darkness. It had this real darkness to it. So this is like a, definitely an alpha male kind of a fragrance. It reminded me very much of a fragrance that I have smelled. And actually I have it. I haven't, I don't know what to do with this fragrance because my husband doesn't like it. I think it's really good. I bought it for him. I think it's called Black Mahir. It is a Middle Eastern fragrance that has the, like a stallion on top. Absolutely fantastic fragrance. My husband's not into it, but I think it's great. And this one, Black Male, reminded me somewhat of that even better than Mahir. So I really enjoy trying this, although I think it's too much for me specifically to wear. If my husband wanted it, I would definitely grab it for him. And then the last one is called Walk the Sea. I love that name. And it's one of the favorites of male reviewers on YouTube that have reviewed kerosene fragrances. So I was super interested in trying this. The notes are sea salt, white florals, cedar, ambergris, and musk. So I found this to be masculine, but friendly enough for ladies to wear who are a little bit intimidated by super masculine fragrances. And it leans super far in that direction. And in terms of the mood, this one was contemplative and melancholy. For me, this was like faint ocean air, like the smell of faint ocean air. It reminded me of being atop a sea cliff, a sea cliff with the spray of the water. Like if you think about videos of, of sea splashing into beaches near cliffs and you imagine like the sea foam spraying up and what the air from that smells like, like how that smells in the, in the air. I just said that. So <laughs> the spray of that water sort of reaching your nose, this was very pleasant, very sort of ozonic that way. And it had a little bit of soapiness to this. So Walk the Sea gets a really big thumbs up for me. I don't know that I would purchase it and want to wear it on the daily. In a former life, I would have been rocking this fragrance quite often. I think that is maybe not my scent profile anymore, but if you like fragrances that remind you of uh, being seaside or by an ocean with rolling waves, this one definitely gives me that vibe. So it gets a, a big thumbs up there. So just to recap, I really appreciate the uniqueness of this house and the story of the perfumer and the attempt to bring all of these sort of automotive facets into the fragrance. The name of the house, Kerosene, tells you a little bit about the, the depth of the fragrances. My favorite, just to recap, is Unknown Pleasures, followed by Sweetly Known. I would pick up a bottle of Followed, maybe at some point in the future. I'd love to get a bottle of Copper Skies for my husband. And I would buy him a bottle of Blackmail if he was into it. And for those of you that are really into that seaside vibe, that smell, I would definitely say check out Walk the Sea, worth looking into. So that's my House of Kerosene review. Let me know your thoughts. I wasn't able to review them all. There's 20 that the house offers all together. And like I said, there's samples on the website. And if you order a bottle, each bottle comes with two samples. So take advantage of that and check out the house. Let me know your thoughts. Have you tried any of these? Do you enjoy? Is this a house that you would look into? Did anything that I said today intrigue you enough to want to go check out the house? All right, that's it for House of Kerosene. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.